as the son of an Israeli, as someone with an Israeli passport, as someone who has friends and family over there. Obviously, no one approves of the slaughter of innocent people. No one. And of course, I am concerned for my friends and family who are in Israel. That being said, I do not stand with Israel at all on what's going on. And I'm finally starting to realize, for lack of a better term, how brainwashed I've been. I was taught to love Israel. I went to Jewish elementary and Jewish high school. And, you know, we're singing the Hatikva, the national anthem, we're singing all these Jewish songs, and we're taught this one very specific view of, view of history. We were taught, basically, that, like, the land was ours. We were taught that, like, well, we tried to offer them a solution. We tried to offer them peace, and they kept on attacking us. And the reason why we kept on gaining more and more land was because they would start wars with us. And we would defend ourselves, and we would just end up with more land. And so we would try and give it back to them every once in a while, but they wouldn't accept it. Now I'm starting to recognize more and more and more, firstly, that the Palestinians are living in, this is the phrase that's being thrown around, an open-air prison. 2.2 million people who are being restricted in their food, their water, their electricity, their fuel. Children who are born into a prison who are never going to be able to go and go anywhere and do anything. And this has been going on for 50 to 60 years. And we were taught to resent them. And so, you know, obviously, again, the killing of innocent people by the Palestinians, awful, terrible, inexcusable. And then I watch Israel's response, carpet bombing, this open-air prison with 2.2 million people, they're doing the same thing. I do not stand with Israel. I stand with the Palestinian people. I do not understand how we as Jews can stand by while a nation cries for freedom. They are trapped there. It might not be as explicit as putting them into gas chambers, but it's still genocide. And we talk as Jews in regards to the Holocaust of never again. Is it just never again to us? Or is it never again? Because I thought it meant never again. But we're still being taught this separation and this complete lack of identification of what is happening with these people. So, now, can I excuse the fact that, you know, Hamas has killed civilians? No. But does that change other elements of the situation. So this is what I'm saying, where we're going from this binary, black and white, of they are bad, we are right, to wait a minute. There's a much more complicated situation going on here. And firstly, we do need to distinguish, much so, between the Palestinians. And even to the extent that we are going to call Hamas terrorists. I mean, I don't know. Firstly, there was a story floating around of them beheading 40 babies. Now we look at something like that. And that makes us think, oh, well, they are evil. Because I like to think that even, even in the uprising, you know, in, in the Holocaust, the Warsaw uprising, the concentration camp uprisings, I would like to believe that even in those situations, the Jews who were rising up didn't attack and kill civilians just for the sake of it. They wouldn't commit atrocities. They wouldn't rape German women. That being said, I don't know. Maybe they did. But beside the point. We were told that Hamas beheaded 40 babies. And we look at that, and that gives us like, oh, well, they are terrorists. You know, that's beyond any freedom fighting thing. That is that there's beyond no excuse. And then turns out, wait a minute, there is no evidence of that. And the news outlets that first put out that story then retract the statement. You can't retract a statement. Once it's out there, the damage is done. Because let's say you, you publish a news story and 10 million people hear the story of Hamas beheaded 40 babies. Then you post the retraction. Firstly, the retraction doesn't get as much news as the original post. So 10 million people heard you say that Hamas beheaded 40 babies and only 2 million people heard you make that retraction. And even the, of the ones that did hear you make that retraction, half of them don't believe it. And even if they do believe it, that image is still in your head. There is no denying that Israel has been using propaganda. 
that so much of what we know is not the truth of things. So we don't know. You don't know what's happening there. I don't know what's happening there. There are a few things that we can know. We can know the big picture story. We can know that there are 2.2 million people being subjugated in that place who cannot live their lives. We can know for certain that civilians were killed from Hamas, from the Palestinians, and we can know for certain that even more civilian and children were killed by Israelis' response. So, firstly, let's open up our interpretation of everything that's going on there. Let's move from this binary, black and white, to they are wrong and we are right, to wait a minute. The Israelis are causing more death, really, than the Palestinians, and we're being taught that, wait, we're the good guys here because this is our land kind of thing, because we're standing up for ourselves. It's, I mean, it's not our land. We were given the land. It's like, if someone comes up to you, the government comes up to you right now and says, Hi, um, here's this person, you know, they're a refugee from Syria. This is their house now. Like, what do you mean this is their house now? Well, here's this person, they're a refugee, they've been in a lot of pain, and we've decided to host these people, so this is their house now. You're going to have to leave. I don't want to leave. Okay, 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 fine. I'll tell you what, they'll take the left side of the house, and you take that little 10%, that, that one room. You keep your bedroom, but they get the rest of the 90% of this house. Is that acceptable to you? And you go, no. And they go, well, now you're, you're, it's your fault. So go to your bedroom. And we're going to lock you in there. That's basically what happened. Sorry, I got more passionate about this than I expected. It is not the difference of religion which is causing this conflict. The state of Israel does not represent all Jews and certainly does not represent the Jewish religion. According to Jewish religion, all of this is criminal. All of this is forbidden. Basics of Jewish belief teaches that Jews are in, in a divinely de decreed exile. We are even forbidden to create a sovereignty for ourselves. But especially when this is by killing, stealing, oppressing an entire people. This is not only criminal according to international law. This is a true violation of Judaism. And still, those people who choose not to follow Judaism misuse that very same religion to justify all those crimes forbidden in Judaism. We have a picture here even, you can see how we used to live together and we babysat each other's children, we lived in total peace. This con so the, 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 that is why the very religious around the world, we stand in total support. We hurt, we cry with the Palestinians, we are humiliated because the Zionists took our religion and they're using it as a tool to occupy, to intimidate, to silence other people because if you speak up against them, you're called anti-Semitic. So we, 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 the religious communities uh, stand in opposition. Mm -hmm. how, yeah. how do you oppose the Zionist movement? Well, the first thing is we believe we, first of all, we, we do not accept it, we do not part, part, participate with them. We have the very religious communities, doesn't, uh, does not serve in the army, certainly not. Um, the, they, uh, they, they don't go voting, they have nothing to do with the state.